very much, uh, Florian. Indeed, we are talking about adjuvant treatment to surgery. And from the start, it has been an enormous difference where the surgery has been performed. Operative mortality at the start of surgery more than a century ago differed between 40 and 100 percent. The Dutch gastric cancer trial, which I had the privilege to coordinate, was the first trial with quality assurance and comparing D1 versus D2 dissections with a lot of problems with station number 10 causing morbidity and mortality in our Dutch patients. But the long-term results after 15 years indicated decrease of local recurrence and regional recurrence as a result of D2 dissection. And here you can see the death of gastric cancer was improved by 11% by performing a D2 resection. So the conclusion was, more or less for Europe, D2 dissection should be recommended as standard surgical approach in resectable gastric cancer. And thereafter came the question, obviously, of adjuvant treatment because the surgical dependency for curative role of surgery is limited. Already discussed, the intergroup study indicating a benefit of chemoradiation therapy and a Japanese study indicating S1. Two differences, of course, an enormous difference in the surgery alone arm in survival, 60% surgery alone in Japanese. Japanese patients usually 10 years younger, less comorbidity, slimmer patient, less postoperative morbidity, and these patients were randomized after they had recovered of surgery. And a lot of patients, we have an elderly growing population with a lot of comorbidities, heavier patients. So we have seen this many times, the three uh, uh, approaches. We did a Dutch observational study on D2 and D1 dissection compared with chemoradiation therapy. And as you can see with D1, there's an enormous difference, both in local recurrence as well as a, a small difference in overall survival. But after D2 dissection, we could not de de detect this difference in a retrospective analysis. So the conclusion for the time being was that adjuvant chemoradiation therapy had survival and a recurrence benefit fit over D1, but not over D2 surgery. The MAGIC trial, indeed, we participated as the Netherlands also in perioperative chemotherapy, after which it became the standard. And of course, we are aware that all the studies indicating adjuvant postoperative chemotherapy have a small but significant benefit of postoperative chemotherapy. But realize again, these patients are recovered from surgery, are fit and well to undergo this treatment. So there is a limitation. And also, as Florian indicated, this is a small Swiss Italian study making its point of pre versus post-operative chemotherapy, compliance pre-75%, compliance post-34%. So pre-operative therapy is associated with better compliance. That's proven by many studies so far. I'd like to indicate again on the value of surgery, and this is an initiative currently chaired by Bill Ellam, who was in the audience, which is an upper GI audit in Europe. And there are differences in outcome in esophageal and gastric cancer surgery across Europe. And this is about 20,000 patients valued in Europe. And here you can see hospital volume and mortality decreases with the higher volume. So far, more than 40 for esophagus and more than 20 in gastric, but probably it's way more in order to have lower operative mortality. And when there's high mortality, there's high morbidity as well, and this prevents post-operative treatment. And there were differences between the high volume centers, and that had a relation with, with the adequacy of the multidisciplinary team handling this. So that was the reason, and uh, again, uh, Bill is uh, 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 chairing this to have an upper uh, European upper gastrointestinal cancer audit analyzing these differences and giving advices. And here you can see such an advice, a clinical practice guideline from ESMO, ESO, and ESTRO. But it's not clear. You can see preoperative, postoperative chemotherapy. Uh, everything is possible. There is no clear guideline at this moment. And also indicated there are two research uh, projects in the perioperative setting, the Critics and the Top Gear, and the Critics has been closed now since April. Uh, initially, we said D1, 15 lymph nodes or more, the preoperative chemotherapy, 
preoperative randomization with uh, tissue banking and postoperative chemoradiation therapy and ECC. And here you can see we closed the study in April with 788 patients, which is fairly well, and also uh, Sweden and uh, Denmark participated. And you can see that uh, uh, 42 uh, percent of patients died in, in June, and the DSMB concluded that final analysis could be planned after 430 events, and the primary endpoint is expected already this year, so the results can be presented uh, next year, Florian, already. Preoperative chemotherapy completed, 85 percent, so fairly good, but when you see that the radicality of surgery, 77%. Also, there was quality control of surgery and pathology. Post-operative th treatment started, 62%, so way lower. And here you see all the reasons not to start post-operative therapy. And obviously, post-operative complications are part of this, but a majority also of progressive disease. Post-operative th therapy, started and then completed is still fairly good, is 80%. And you can see that also the radicality in the, uh, of surgery from 2007 up to 2014 increased. So we have to value that not all patients were surgically treated appropriately according to a D2 dissection. Most important here is that overall you can see that the compliance with study treatment is half. And that's the real problem and will be more problematic in the future when we have more elderly patients with co more comorbidity. So in the conclusion, in my conclusions, is that optimal tailored surgery is still the most important factor, is crucial. And it should be in a high volume, but also audited center, a center that knows its results and knows how it is functioning in multidisciplinary setting. So again, with Florian, and of course we are both Europeans, preoperative uh, radio chemotherapy results in better compliance, better response evaluation, better tolerance, and more R0 resection. And we should focus in selecting these patients, perhaps with radiology and PET scans better, uh, which patients can benefit from this treatment. And of course, in the future, especially also with distal esophageal and junction tumors, in case of a complete response, can surgery be adapted or avoided? Overtreatment is, of course, a problem, so we have to select our patients better. post of the therapy, of course, when there is a high risk for local regional relapse, especially in patients with an R1 resection, uh, there's an indication of post-operative chemoradiation therapy, and that's well proven. And of course, when there is a high lymph node uh, uh, burden, high risk, therefore high risk for distant metastasis, post-operative chemotherapy is indicated. But indeed, I think we should focus more on preoperative treatment and the role of radiation therapy, especially in the post-operative setting, especially in relation to uh, our European patients with a D2 dissection, will be known, and uh, we will submit with our team uh, the results to ESCO next year. I thank you very much for your attention.